Hello there, and welcome to the math review. This lesson is on subtracting decimals. And we have three examples that we're going to have to go over. But again, like our other lessons, we're going to have to make sure that we understand the rules before we try and solve any of these examples. So rule number one says, make sure when you're subtracting decimals that you use the decimal points to line up your place values. Now that's really important. A lot of students just try to line up the decimal point, but then don't worry about the place values. But the place values are actually the most important part of this rule. Because what happens is the decimal point that you see, it helps you to line up one digit on top of the other digit. If you ever have two digits inside of one column, that's a sign that you might have done something wrong. You gotta go back and check your work. Step number two is to annex zeros. And that word annex is just a fancy math word which means to make sure that you use zeros as placeholders. And then step number three is to subtract each column starting from the right. So you have to make sure that when you start subtracting, you're starting from the right column that you have set up. So what we're gonna do for each of these examples is we're gonna put one number on top of the other and then make sure that we have everything lined up correctly so that when we subtract, we don't run into any issues. Let's start with number one. So here for example one, step one is to make sure that we use a decimal point to line up each of these place values. So we'll put 0 0.9 here first. Now that I've got my 0 0.9 set up, or my 9 tenths, I can put the 0 0.482 right underneath it. But again, you gotta make sure that you're using rule one, which is to make sure that you're using the decimal point to set up your place values. So here's what I mean. In this number here, 0 0.482, we've got this decimal point here and then three numbers to the right of it. Each number is going to be in its own separate column. So I like to start with a decimal point. And then right next to that to the right is four. Right next to that is eight. And directly to the right of that is two. I also have a zero to the left of the decimal point. And now that I have my numbers set up, now I can move on to step number two, which is to annex zeros, or basically to make sure that we use zeros as placeholders. So anywhere here that you see a blank, we can annex or place a zero there. So I'll have one zero here on top of eight and one zero here on top of two. And take a look at what happened after I annex these zeros. Everything is nicely and neatly in columns. That's the whole point of using rule number one to make sure that we use our decimal points to line up each of our place values. Now we'll put our minus sign and a line under everything. And then we can finally go to step three, which is to subtract each column starting from the right. So I'll start at this right column here. We've got zero minus two, but uh, that's a no can do. So we've got to go to our neighbor over here and see if we can borrow anything but this neighbor has absolutely nothing because it's a zero. So we have to give this neighbor something before we can borrow and provide for this place value here. Here's what I mean. We wanna make this a 10, but we can't yet because we can't borrow from zero. So this zero is gonna to have to borrow from this nine. So this nine is gonna to have to become an eight. This zero can now become a 10. Since now that it's a 10, I can borrow from this 10, make it a nine, and then this zero here will become a 10. So now we've got 10 minus two, which is eight. Nine minus eight, which is one. Eight minus four, which is four. We'll bring down our decimal point directly under the decimal points in the problem and zero minus zero is zero. So our final answer is 0 0.418, although the proper way to read that is 418 thousandths. Now let's go to example number two. We'll follow the same exact rules that we followed in example one. So step one says to make sure that we use our decimal point to line everything up. So the first thing I'll do is write 93.25. And then I'll make sure that I use a decimal point in the second number, 81.909, and use that to line up each of the place values. I'll start with my decimal point. I've got a nine right next to that. I'll put that under the two. 
I've got a zero next to that. I'll put it right under the five. And I still have a nine here, so I'm gonna put that right here. And then to the left of the decimal point, I've got a one and then an eight. So that's step one. Now we'll go to step two. Anywhere we see an empty place value, we can annex a zero. So since I have an empty place value here, I'll put a zero right above the nine. Now I can go to step three, which is to subtract each column starting from the right. So I'll put a subtraction symbol here and a line under everything. And then again, I'll start right here. I've got zero minus nine, but I can't take away nine from nothing. So I've got to borrow from this five. This five will now become a four. And then this zero will become a 10. Now I can subtract this column because 10 minus nine is just one. Four minus zero is four. How about this column? Can we do two minus nine? No, we cannot. So we're gonna have to borrow again. Some people call it regroup. It really just means the same thing. We'll look at this column right here. We're gonna borrow one from the three, which makes it a two now. And then this two will now become a 12. So now we've got 12 minus nine, which is three. I'll bring down a decimal point right under my other decimal points. I've got two minus one, which I can do, which is just one. And then nine minus eight, which is one. So the difference of these two numbers is 11.341, or properly read as 11 and 341 thousandths. So let's go to example three. We've got 132.215 minus 13.44. Step one says to make sure we use a decimal point to line everything up. So let's write down the first number. Next, we'll use a decimal point in 13.44 to make sure everything is in the proper column. So I'll put the decimal point here. To the right, I've got four, four. So I'll put a four in this column here. And the next four will go under the one. Then on the left of the decimal point, we've got three and one. So I'll put a three under this two and the one under the three. Then we can go to step two, which says to annex any zeros and any place values that are empty, like this one here. So I'll annex a zero underneath the five. And since there's nothing else that we can annex, and by the way, annexing only happens to the right of the decimal point. We can't annex a zero here because annexing a zero has to do with decimal place values. On this side of the decimal point, you have whole numbers. So don't even worry about it. Next, we can go to step three, which is to subtract everything. So I'll put my minus sign and the line under everything. Then I have to make sure I start at the right, which isn't too bad because I've just got five minus zero and that's just five. Next, I've got one minus four. Can we do one minus four? No. So we're going to have to borrow from this two. This two will have to become a one. And this one will become an 11. So now I've got 11 minus four, which is seven. Then I go to my next column. I've got one minus four. That can't be done. So we're gonna have to borrow again. This time we're gonna borrow from this two. This two will have to become a one and this one will become an 11. So now I've got 11 minus four, which again is seven. I'll bring down the decimal point right under the other decimal points. And then I go to the next column. But here, I can't do this either. I can't do one minus three. I don't have enough up here. So again, I'm gonna to have to borrow. I'll borrow from this three. This three will have to become a, what do you think? A two, if I'll cross it off, I'll put a two there. And now this one can become 11, which means now I can do my subtraction. 11 minus three is eight. 
Now I've got 2 minus 1, which is 1, and 1 minus nothing, which is just 1. So our final answer here is 118.775, or 118 and 775 thousandths. Thanks for watching our video on the math review. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We might use your question in our next video. And if you found this lesson helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And it would really help if you share this and our other videos to any of your social media platforms. See you next time on The Math Review.